Welcome to uh, another uh, another Wide Open Talk Show. Uh, this is episode three for Wednesday, April the 6th, 2016. You know, I just noticed, Sam, that I had 2015 in the document. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see that. You didn't have to confess about that. <laughs> I know, but I just felt like I needed to. Anyway, that, of course, is the voice of uh, Mr. Sam Lewis, my good friend. Sam, it's Wednesday. How are you doing today? Doing fantastic. The the problems that I talked about yesterday have been fixed now. So I'm, good. I'm doing much better. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I saw that on Snapchat this morning, and I was like, okay, well that's that's good. Uh, sounded like to me it was one of those scenarios that the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. Yeah, a little bit. I I did get that idea off of it. Well, I'm just glad you got it resolved because I know that was. That was a little bit of stress level there, and and you know, and based on some of the things we talked about yesterday, along with that, that's ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, don't need that kind of stress. So uh, anyway, this is the wide open talk show, and it seems like I'm having a weird issue with internet connectivity <laughs> today because your your video keeps going in and out. Yeah. I I literally just skipped out. <laughs> hey. All right. Well, it's trying to send your video back. There we go. There we go. Well, we'll see. We'll see how that works. <laughs> I don't know why we're having issues today, but and I just noticed I've got to uh you're a little off center. <laughs> I have to apologize to anybody watching this live and even, you know, recorded because uh we had a little bit of an issue before we got started, and we normally come in here and start, you know, 15 minutes before, and I was doing some stuff, and when I called you, couldn't get the stream to work, and mm. I don't know. Anyway, we'll go with it. We'll, <laughs> we'll do it live. <laughs> do it live. <laughs> uh, now, let me regroup. Okay, anyway, call-in number <laughs> is 229-518-3525. That's 229-518-3525. Um... And the thing that I kind of wanted to lead off with uh, today is, have you ever, have you ever suffered social media burnout or social media overload? I, let, let me get a good definition of that in my head. So in other words, the, the amount of time where you've been on social media and you've just had enough of it and need to take a vacation, is that the sort of burnout you're talking about? I, I guess, and not this past Christmas, but uh, Christmas before, and not really Christmas, but December. So it would have been December 2014. I actually took an entire month off from Facebook. I removed the I, app, app from my phone, and I actually logged out of it on uh, any of my PCs. I remember you doing that, in fact, yeah. And quite honestly, that was probably one of the the best months of alleviated stress, if you will, that, that I've enjoyed in a, quite a long time. And I'm not saying it's all due to social media, but what got me to thinking about it this morning was, I don't know, <clears throat> you know, I, Tyler and I went grocery shopping this morning. It's some of the things, you know, I do now because, you know, Lee is working and uh, we have a little bit more free time. I mean, we have an appointment at four o'clock this afternoon, but point being, things just didn't feel right today. And and I found myself, whenever I, I was sitting at my computer, I found myself scrolling through Facebook and just getting more aggravated and more <laughs> aggravated by everything that I was seeing. And of course, I had some some very good uh, discussions with a friend of mine who we have completely contrary viewpoints on this particular subject, and we talked about it a little bit yesterday, so I'm not going to bring it up again today. Right. Um, and I didn't really feel like I was getting frustrated from that so much, um, but I, I don't know what it was. It, it, I think I've made a mistake of... There's there's a particular group that I follow because I am a Bernie Sanders supporter. And it seems like that out of five posts that I scroll through, four of them are from that group. Or there is something related to this damn election 
that I can't get <laughs> away from. It's Hillary lied or Bernie lied or Hillary did this and she took money and and, and then occasionally it's Trump's being a dumbass again, which, you know, I think he was born that way. <laughs> and it it just I just finally had enough of it and I actually clicked and closed the tab. And mm. I was like, I don't get this 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 feeling of of this overwhelming desire to reach out and strangle somebody by watching Twitter. Mm. But I do in Facebook. And and I I don't know, maybe it's just because today is Wednesday. It's uh the stars have aligned. I don't know, but <laughs> I just got really damned aggravated, and I got to thinking about it, and I'm like, am I su- <clears throat> am I suffering from an overload of social media? Because I mean, we can't you can suffer an overload of information. Oh yeah, and social media is more than just information. It's highly charged, a lot of times politically motiv- motivated or polarizing information, which makes you feel, you know, vindicated. Or really ticked off because you don't understand why the opposing side can't understand that they're idiots and morons and come on over to your side, you know? Right. Yeah. So I don't know. So that's kind of the reason why I wanted to bring it up. I don't, I, I just was curious if you had ever actually felt that way before. Well, I tend to do something, and we've talked about this policy before, but I'm going to kind of refresh it for anyone that hasn't heard it and stuff like that. Um, But I do have a policy that I use in social media, especially Facebook, for this specific situation, because as podcasters, we sort of have to be in social media. Mm -hmm. There's, There's no way we can just not be there in some shape or form, right? Um. So Facebook in particular is very good at people yell, pulling out their bullhorns, yelling, here is why I'm right and you're wrong and there's not a dang thing you can do about it. You know, <laughs> that, that seems to be what Facebook, in fact, is known for. A, lo- a lot of my people, like Dad, for instance, that do not use Facebook and refuse to use Facebook only know it via the reputation of people griping and bitching and moaning the entire time. Yep. That's what they think all of Facebook and social media in general is because they, they've they just been told about the loud jerkish ones, <laughs> for lack of better terms. Um, so it, the way that I handle this is that I will friend a person, but and this is going to make me sound possibly uppity or something, hopefully not, but it could. I have a filtering policy a very strict filtering policy uh, with my Facebook friends where I will friend someone and then if they are negative for more than usually two or three weeks, I'll get, cause everyone has a bad week, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's sometimes you just have a crappy week and you need to steam. And I totally understand that. I'm not going to go, Oh, one negative thing. Blah, you know, that's, that'd be ridiculous. But if, <laughs> They tend to be the type of person, because I figured out there are two types of people on Facebook. There is the person that comments, gives their opinion nicely, but gives their opinion, and is the same person that they are, whether you saw them on Facebook or you were standing right in front of them talking Mm face-to-face. And then there's the other person, the person that decides to take all of the negative, hateful, complaining parts about themselves. And I guess it's that weird thing where since you're not talking directly to someone's face, you think it's okay. Yeah. That sort of stopgap in a brain. And there's even been studies to do about internet trolls and stuff like this involving why these people do this. And it's because for some reason there's a stopgap in people's brains. Any human, they're typing on a computer, oh, I'm not talking to another human being. I'm just doing this on a computer. Sure, yeah. I've seen those studies. Exactly. And that's the other type of person that exists on Facebook, is the person that becomes this angry, bitter person when they're on social media, and those are the people I tend to unfollow, block, and generally cull out of the situation. And nice little trick, by the way. It used to be that there was this possible awkward moment where you would have to unfriend that person to get rid of their post, right? Now, 
because Facebook enabled this whole follow feature. That way you could follow a person and not be friends with them. It works in a little extra little side jag to where you can be friends with someone and not see their post at all. Yeah, so, that's right. That's right. I forgot so, about that. So little inside thing, and I will give no hints as to who it is or anything. It's no one anyone would know anyway. But I do have some people that I am friended with on Facebook that I never see their post because they are nothing but a well of politics and negativity and this person's an idiot. And why'd you vote for them and stuff like that? And I just <laughs> shut them off. But, but, just, but Sam, I, I see your post. You don't see mine? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that joke was coming, right? You're, yep. And you're not one of the bad ones. But whenever you put something up, it it has an it has an air of I'm not being superior to you at all. I can't stand the ones that do have this like look like like we got a new governor in our state a couple of months ago. So now I have a relative who is a Democrat who has now been ranting about how now we've ruined the state she's originally from. You know, stuff like that <laughs> is the stuff that I just don't have freaking time for. So even though, I've, so there's these awkward situations where you go, mm, this person doesn't follow my policy. In the old days, I would unfriend that person, but now I can just shut their post off. So I still have a connection to them yeah. via messenger and stuff like that, but I don't have to deal with them ranting and raving all dang day. And maybe that's something you're dealing with is that for some reason, Facebook in particular gives people that strange little pass in their brain for a lot of them to be uh, common courtesy. Let's just throw that out the window and let's rant angrily and someone will listen, you know, and, and that may be what you're experiencing. It, it could be, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that. I mean, I'm not saying that you're, you're incorrect. It's, it very well could kind of uh, bleed into it some, but and and maybe today, like I said, it's just because it's an off day for me, and I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, you know, maybe the magnetic fields of the Earth or I uh, need recalibrating. I'm not sure, but um, it's and and I I'm afraid I've done it to myself because I I want to stay informed because I think this election is probably one of the most important elections. Uh, in my lifetime, mm. uh, but because of the possibility that uh, we might actually get some, you know, hope and change, I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. it, I, I just get, I just get so aggravated with it, and and I have to take a break. And I realize that, like you say, if, if we're going to play in this medium, then we've got to be on social media, and that means we've got to be on Twitter, we've got to be on Facebook. I really don't put that much stock in Google Plus, even though I still think it's a very good platform. And if you want some some what I would consider higher brow conversations, then yeah, go over to Google Plus, Google Plus because that's that seems to be where the more intellectual people actually hang out. And before anybody jumps on my ass, no, I didn't <laughs> say that dumbasses are the only th only people that hang out in Facebook and Twitter. That's not what I said. I just sometimes said, feels like it, but that doesn't mean that's actually that's, what it is. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So it's how to balance this tool that I need to use to get the message out, the entertainment, what you know, all of the things that we do in this this medium, you know, podcasting and videos and all these other things, it's how to balance that using this tool, but also keep some sanity about me uh, and and not allowing myself to fall into the that black hole of whatever it is that it just, mm. it feels like it swallows me whole sometimes. So, and, you know, tomorrow I may not feel that way. I mean, yesterday I didn't feel that way. Yesterday I I was I was curious because you know they had the they had the primary in Wisconsin and I I kind of kept up with that. So it uh maybe something about April sixth. Maybe I just need to stay in bed every April sixth. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> stay in bed. Think. Oh, Samuel's got a podcast anniversary, and then carry on with your. That's day. right. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Congratulations. This makes six years? Yep. Six years of podcasting. Wow. Six years. Of, see, I 
I don't exactly remember my my first foray into it. All I know is it was 2011. It was somewhere in February, I believe. Yeah. So, um, and I did my very first podcast. It was it was on a property that I own called Tipton Talks, and I use Blog Talk Radio to do the recording. <laughs> and I was I was nervous as hell. I mean, I know nobody was listening to me, but. <laughs> You know, I did a 30-minute podcast, and I, it was nerve-wracking. And my wife told me it sounded it, it sounded terrible because I sounded like I was reading from a script. And she wasn't <laughs> wrong, because I was. <laughs> you were, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what it was. Good. I, yeah. I wrote up the, the news stories, and I read them. Mm. And then I listened to it after she said what she said, and I'm like, you're right. That's complete <laughs> shite. <laughs> so, <laughs> definitely. But... Yeah, so yeah, congratulations. Six years. Um mm. you know, this calls for a party. Woo! Okay, that was it. That's a party. Oh, trust me, I've already got one friend on Facebook saying, You need to have a party. It's like it's, I'm celebrating it the way I know how, podcasting with a good friend. So <laughs> Hey, what what better way to do, right? So Yep. I actually thought about decorating the whiteboard behind me, put a big six on it or something. I thought people think I'm cocky then. I better <laughs> Oh, come on. You you could have done that, you know, a special hashtag or something, you know, <laughs> that would have been awesome too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like uh, this story here with the George Mason University Law School, mm -hmm. <laughs> having uh, renaming the law school to the Antonin Scalia School of Law. Anyone want to work for acronyms here and figure it out before we give the punchline? <laughs> Well, well, we'll simply say that they renamed it uh, because they got an anon anonymous donation of $30 million. Um, sounds like a, a perfectly good good name to me, the Antonin Scalia School of Law, until, <laughs> until you break it down into the, the hashtag. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hashtag ass law. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you want... At some point, these people have to start paying attention to how you acronize things because I don't, I don't get, I don't get how this got passed. Mm -mm. I don't know how someone did not sit there in that boardroom. How many people were in this room trying to figure out how to name this? How about we call it this? And not one person went. Ah, da, da, da. You know what that shortens to? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, they've since come out and issued a statement and clarified the school's name. Um, it says, under the terms of the anonymous gift, we are authorized to use a variety of different names. The name initially announced, the Antonin Scalia School of Law, has caused some acronym controversy on social media. So now it is the Antonin Scalia Law School. So it's uh, A-S-L-S. Yeah. Okay. So, we uh, they they continue. We anticipate the naming will be effective on July first, two thousand sixteen, pending final approval by the State Council of Higher Education of Virginia. So, the question I have then is, did hashtag Aslaw actually get the approval of the State Council of Higher Education of, uh, for Virginia, or did it n not actually get to that point? Did they just say, okay? This is what we want to name it, and then suddenly the internet, the internet got a hold of got it. a hold of it, and they went, yeah. "Oh, never mind," because they they would have looked like complete idiots if they had actually submitted that to the the state council of higher education for Virginia. Mm -hmm. I mean, could you imagine those folks up there looking at it, and then I don't know how many's on the board or whatever, but one turns to the other and says, "Hey, Joe, have you looked at the hashtag of what this thing could be shortened to?" No way. And everybody just burst out laughing. You're like, yep, that's approved. <laughs> yep, Bob, I've just been Snapchatting this entire meeting. I think it's swell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, you have to be very careful now. You, you, uh, you know, there, there have been websites that, um, of course, none of them come to mind right now. They, I wish they would, but where you take two distinct names as the name of the company or, or whatever service it is that you want to uh, provide. But then when you crunch it together as a domain name, 
and it completely turns into something different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I know the types of examples. I can't come up with any off the top of my head either, but. Uh, <laughs> okay. Producer just shared one. It said Susan Boyle's album party. All right. Hashtag Susan album party, but it looks like sus anal bum party. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay. S U S A N A L. Yep. Uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Okay. All right. Um, Takes a bit to suss that one out, but anyway. <laughs> oh, I need the soundboard active. <laughs> 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 oh, wait a minute. I think I do. Hang on. Hang on. Let's see if this works. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <sighs> Better late than never. <laughs> All right. What you got? Because there's... Are you gonna sh- Are you gonna talk about the one that you actually shared yesterday and <laughs> said uh, this has got to be a joke? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll I'll be the one to cop to this. Okay. So last night, Wednesday nights may be the interesting nights for us, depending on what I get the Tuesday night. Because now that I've been unemployed, I've been getting the distinct pleasure of being able to stay up late and actually watch Night Attack, a podcast that I really like live. So. Mm-hmm. A diamond club, everything. Um, So as a result, the pre-show of this show consists of the chat realm, as we're called, the diamond club ourselves, um, showing Brian and Justin a variety of weird things that they've just collected on the internet. Uh, These can be sketches on YouTube, songs, (laughs) slightly inappropriate things. Um relationship advice tips involving fruits that's just there's just some varieties of things that would not be good for a safer working audience and this this is skirting the line just a bit i'm not gonna lie i'm 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 skirting it a tad with this but it's it's not like it's some adult industry thing so this time i think both me and donovan are gonna let this one slide right (laughs) Yeah, because by the time we're over, I've got to talk about the perk of the 10,000 euro thing if you pay. Uh, anyway, keep going. <laughs> yes, because I, I have not dug really deep into this thing, right? Um, oh, I did. <laughs> I'm sure you did, yes. Um, so there is an Indiegogo campaign. Indiegogo cam- campaigns happen. You know, it's the it's the even more open Kickstarter, if yes. anyone's heard starter so indiegogo is set up to where instead of having to be funded and then you get the money any money you make you get right right so right and only and not only that but you can you can actually fund causes it doesn't actually have to be a product on indiegogo yeah um brian brushwood before kickstarter had changed their ideas did an indiegogo for the scam stuff starting out Mm -hmm. was part of so that was my experience with indiegogo fantastic experience i don't know if i've never been so happy to not be a drinker in all of my life (laughs) as this story has now come up so there is a group i i have to think this has to be a joke there is no way that they are actually seriously i don't think it's a joke (laughs) i would hope so but um so the process of beer is an interesting thing you can get different cultures from different places i have It works with cheese the same way. I've heard of cheese being made from armpit bacteria and stuff like that. It's like when you're brewing beer. I mean, you can actually take the same hops but grow it in different areas, and you'll get a different flavor. Mm -hmm. That's why different places brew different things Mm -hmm. because they've got the different... The different flavor compounds to make things a whole different blend. Um, (laughs) Yes. Talk about beer like a wine connoisseur. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. This is a vintage 2016 January. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Um, But the point is, they have now decided to get cultures for this beer from a very interesting place. (laughs) Lady bits. Can we just put it that way? Um, Oh, come on now. This is... (laughs) <laughs> it's called a vagina. <laughs> okay, fine. 
<laughs> I don't want someone soundboarding me saying that, and then they'll use it for a soundboard. Hey, I'll, do, I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. <laughs> vagina, 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 vagina. <laughs> God, now my soundboard may have something horrible on it. Like, <laughs> uh, oh, but anyway, this do you have the ability to actually play some of the audio of this in your setup to where they can actually hear how <clears throat> mildly pompous this whole thing sounds? Uh, yeah, hang on a second. I'm not, I'd have thought about it beforehand. I would have, uh, I would have brought it up, but. Stand by, <laughs> because I've got to. Uh, I've got to actually get the link over to the other machine. What well, while he's doing that? So far, the thing has raised one or nine hundred eighty-one euros in thirteen days. It's going for one hundred and fifty. Uh, one hundred fifty thousand. Yet some. Sometimes extra zeros throw me off. Uh, 150,000 euros. <laughs> Math which is I have hard. Not, which I have not done the math to figure out how much in U.S. dollars and stuff like that that is. I should have. But the point is, they, and they've got this whole page lying out how this, <laughs> how fantastic this thing is. They talk about it like it's wine. They really do. It's it's bizarre. All right, I got the video. I'm not going to be able to pipe the video through right now, but here's right. the, here here's the audio from it. Imagine a woman of your dreams, your object of desire, her charm, her sensuality, her passion. Try her taste, feel her smell, hear her voice. Now free your fantasies and imagine that with a magic wand you can close it in one bottle of beer. The golden drink brewed with her lure and grace and flavored with instincts, which source we have identified. We have discovered a process of transmission of her essence, of her femininity. Her instincts by isolation of lactic acid bacteria from her vagina. Our laboratory isolates and multiplies the bacteria in a safe way. Additionally, we examine the final bacteria in terms of its purity and safety. We use the bacteria in the production of sour ales, lambics, Flanders ales and sour stouts. By using Yoni bacteria in the process, the beers contain femininity and women's instincts. We have selected beautiful Czech model Alexandra Brendlova to be our source of the Yoni. That is a kind of female whose pheromones will stay with you after the meeting for the following week long. It's total. Okay. All right, we'll we'll just. It's. I could finish that sentence. It's total, but I'm not going to because that would require me to swear a bit. Uh, <laughs> but no, this is <clears throat> this. My my brain is struggling to stay inside of my skull because it just wants to run away and hide some wet place safe. <laughs> <laughs> All I can tell you is, uh, I'm 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 understanding why most of the beers are are sour. <clears throat> anyway, um. That that had occurred, but uh, and you and you know beer more than I do, right? So you some of this terminology probably hits you more than it does me, right? Uh, yeah, I, but even even still, I can. This is so off the wall that it, it just. I'd try it. <laughs> <laughs> I would try it, and here here's what gets me. You know, they like any standard Indiegogo, Kickstarter, or whatever. <clears throat> they have different. Perks. They have yeah. different perks. Well, I was scrolling through, and of course, all of these are in euros because it's over in in uh, in that area, that region. And yeah, I think if someone in America tried to do this, someone would have a conniption fit. I, I know, right? So at eighty four euros, you get a you get an iPhone or a Samsung wooden case. All right, a Yanni wooden case for iPhone six, six S plus, blah blah blah. Um, a Yanni belt. Ninety nine dollars, you get four beers and glass vouchers. One thirty three, you get a Yanni Gold and Black Lighter, and we keep going. You know, fifty five hundred and forty four euros, we get a big Euro Palette voucher, which gives you <clears throat> one thousand eight 
of the beers or a voucher mm. for 864 of that and something else. Then we get down to the 10,000 euro. And I just lost it when I saw this. <laughs> oh, God, I just reached it. <laughs> a voucher for 60 bottles of beer produced on your girlfriend's vaginal bacteria. 40 grams of the bacteria to produce homemade uh, uh, kefir, which I'm not in, or kefir, I'm not entirely sure what that is. I mean, my, my beer knowledge is a little limited. This is something I need to ask Ben. Right. Uh, additionally, may require a visit from the gynecologist in Poland or German, or Germany. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> let's just say that if you decide you're over here in America and you want to give 10,000 euro, um, you and your girlfriend are going to have to take a trip to Germany or Poland. If you give 10,000 euros, you could probably afford to take the trip anyway. Who are we kidding? <laughs> well, that's true. That is true. But can you imagine I can, can you imagine this as a gift from your girlfriend? Here, honey. Here's a special gift for you. I'm having beer made from the bacteria from my vagina. <laughs> There are no words. They're just <laughs> no. I would be like, honey, that you shouldn't have. You you no, really you shouldn't really have. Should <laughs> <laughs> but but thank you. <laughs> this is the perplexing world we live in now. If someone could come up with an idea, they could try to fund it, and this is one of those situations, right? <laughs> this is yeah. Um, ooh. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Um, I, I sent this story around to several of my friends that drink, and even they weren't appealed. And I was like, okay, good. It's not me having a bias then. <laughs> yeah, I say I would try it, but I, w I would have some uh, trepidation uh, of trying it. I would be like, I'll, t I'll have a little sip. <laughs> Entertainment value if there was a camera on you and make a YouTube video. That's, <laughs> that's it. This would have been a great beer to have back when Ben and I did the, the Ben on Beer show. Oh, my Lord, yes. It's, it's <laughs> like, brought to you today from South Georgia, we're trying the very first ever <laughs> vagina beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I think you're right, though. I don't, I don't think something like this would actually fly here in the U.S. Only Probably. in Poland or Germany. Uh, That's crazy. Hey, it's Germany. German. They make good stuff in Germany. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. What we need to do is ask our, our fellow German, Oliver, what he thinks about this, if he would try it. <laughs> That'll be a conversation for Friday. We'll probably see him around. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Definitely. Wow. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Um, since we're on Indiegogo, I did post in the, in the show notes. <clears throat> there's this movie that mm -hmm. is being, uh, they're trying to get made called Code 8, and it's actually from Robbie and Stephen Amell. And of course, if anybody is big into the uh, the DC universe, they'll know that Stephen Amell plays uh, Oliver Queen, aka mm. the Green Arrow, uh, on Arrow on CW. And Robbie is actually his cousin, who played uh, Firestorm in first season on Flash, which is also on the CW. Mm. And uh, Robbie also had a starring role in a, a one-season show that was on the CW called, uh, oh, I always forget the name of it. It's like not The Perfect People or something like that. Anyway, it was... The Tomorrow People? Tomorrow People, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, that yeah. was a remake of a UK thing. That's the only reason why I know it. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, which, if I'm not mistaken, was a remake of either the original UK was actually back in the 70s or the UK remake made one from the 70s and then anyway yeah anyway <clears throat> it, to me it was a good series i liked it uh i was i was kind of disappointed that they didn't renew it but anyway uh and of course robbie does some other things so they're uh they're running this indiegogo campaign to to try and get this movie produced and they did a short uh, which is about 10 minutes long mm. um fantastic absolutely fantastic little short movie uh if the if the quality of the actual feature film that they make is anything like this short feature that they did, um, it, it's I, I definitely would pay to see it. Uh, mm. 
you know, I'd rent it. I wouldn't go to the theater, but that's just me. Right. <clears throat> but the movie basically revolves around people with powers. And they, uh, what's called a code eight is when uh, basically some major crap has gone down uh, involving a, a person of power. And they've got mm-hmm. like these, these special drones that fly over and monitor everything. Uh, they've got these special ro- robotic um, police officers that assist the actual, you know, flesh and bone police officers. And they, uh, their original goal was two hundred thousand dollars. They're sitting at six hundred and twenty-two thousand right now. Yep. And they so have this is definitely going to happen. Oh yeah, and they got seventeen days left. The percentage that they have currently on the Indiegogo thing is. Three hundred and eleven percent funded. Yep. <laughs> so it could it and and they've been really pushing this thing on Facebook. Um, mm. <clears throat> Stephen Amell does a great great job of interacting with his his friends on uh, or his his fan base, which I guess would be his friends, but his fan base. Yeah. On uh on Facebook and Robbie does some of it too, and they've been reaching out and talking about all the perks that you can get and. Um, I forget. I think he said there's like a thousand and something green arrow posters that are going to be signed by all the cats. So it's not only Steven and Robbie. I mean, the, yeah. their friends like from Arrow and what have you are are on board to help with this. I mean, they may not be part of the production team or anything like that, but they're they're definitely throwing their support behind it. Mm-hmm. And if I had the money, I would support it, but. Yeah, same here. <laughs> I would, uh, cause I like some of these, like a hundred and fifty dollars get a signed Code Eight script, one hundred and seventy five dollars get a swag bag, two hundred and fifty. You can be an extra. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you'd have to fly up to Canada. Yeah, but <clears throat> you know. Uh oh yeah, the three hundred dollars sold out is the signed Arrow and Firestorm photo. They have yeah. ten of those. Um. They had 20 of the, I guess they did a 10 and then they did a 20. Yeah. And both Looks of those like are, are sold out. Uh, attend the premiere for 450 in Toronto or attend the premiere in LA, Vancouver. New York City. Yeah, New York City. Cast signed Flash comic book is sold out. X-File, signed X-File sides are sold out. And the reason why is because Robbie was actually in the uh, the, the latest 10-episode uh, X-Files that uh, came came on about a month and a half, two months ago. Yeah. He was actually in it. Uh, his character played someone that was very, very similar to, to uh, Mulder's character at a younger age. So yeah, it was it was good seeing him in that. But I mean, they've got like Robbie's going to be in it. Steven is either going to just be producing or be in it. You have got uh, Soon Kang, who is from uh, he he played the role of Han in uh, Fast and Furious. Um, Jeff Chan, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a nice little production, and I really yeah. I really like it when <clears throat> when actors can get together and they can pull stuff off like this and they didn't have to have a huge Hollywood uh, studio behind them with, you know, suits going, eh, we don't like the way the script is. Make this change, make that change. The number of movies that that has completely screwed up, I mean, you just, it never fails because all they look at is, well, we think this will make more money. You don't understand, you you can't interface (laughs) with the fans apparently. Oh, you are as a number cruncher. You don't know crap about fandom. And a lot of times those numbers are <laughs> are not that accurate based on us playing our movie draft stuff and the surprises that happens in that, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So it's <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, uh, <clears throat> point of fact, producer pointed out, 1973 original British TV series of The Tomorrow People, 1992 British remake, and then in 2013, the American series. Okay. So... I thought it was an original show that then got remade that then we remade. Yeah. It's they talked about that on the Big Finish podcast at some point. There was whispers of them doing a Tomorrow People audio drama. So that 
that got whispered around for a while. And as a result, I learned a lot more about the tomorrow people than I ever thought I would learn. So, <laughs> Yeah, it was, <clears throat> like I said, I, I found it very entertaining, um, the premise. And, you know, the, those actors have gone on to do other things. Um, you know, Robbie wound up going and playing on Flash. Um, one of the, I forget her name, the female lead that was actually on Tomorrow People wound up going and playing on Flash. One of the other male characters that was like the second lead <clears throat> plays on uh, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm. So, and and the funny thing is, is out of those three actors, two of them wound up going and playing other characters that have powers. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So it's, it's really strange. Um, what else we got here? Uh, I just threw this one in here, not, not because it really didn't mean that much to me, other than the fact that I hate to see when someone so young dies, but, uh, mm -hmm. Am Amber Rain, who was an adult film star, and, uh, she, she died at the age of 31, collapsed in her Los Angeles home this past Saturday. Mm -hmm. Her real name is Megan Wren. And according to a friend that was present, said that she was pronounced dead at 3.15 p.m. And the assistant chief of the Los Angeles County Coroners told them that she reportedly died of a possible accident or overdose. Now, and that's in quotes, possible accident or overdose. Does that mean a possible accidental overdose? Or yeah. <laughs> are we trying to say, well... She tripped and fell and hit her head, or she overdosed on drugs. I mean, one of these things is not like the other. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Legal, legal talk anymore is so cagey that you really can't decrypt it anymore, right? Yeah, I know. Um, she started her adult, adult film career in 2005, retired last year in 2015, and uh, apparently she had made headlines uh, because she had been speaking out about alleged assaults by uh, an, a male adult film star, James Dean, which I've heard a lot about that, too. And, and of course, James Dean is in that movie from that teenage pregnancy woman, whatever the heck her name is. I can't remember. She made it big on that uh, adult, uh, not adult, but that reality show about uh, teen pregnant moms or what have you and. She decided to parlay that into, I guess, trying to be like a Kardashian. <laughs> and then she did a sex tape, yeah. which I did watch. I was not impressed. But anyway, so there's that. Uh, you got anything? Uh, just that. That's that's tragic, man. I was that. <sighs> Oh, we could get into a discussion. We could so get <laughs> that industry ruins a lot of people. I'm I'm not being judgmental or anything like that, but it it's one of those. I mean, most mostly it's in L.A. anyway, right? Where the well, that's where, the only place you can actually do porn is in California. Oh, is it? Yeah, I you did... can't shoot it in any unless unless I uh, misunderstood what I have read in the past. You may can in New York. But I'm fairly confident that California is the only state that you can legally shoot uh, a pornographic movies. Okay. <clears throat> so L.A. kind of has this culture anyway, regardless of whether we're talking about adult actors or yeah. you're just standard movie or television actors. There, there, there kind of is this culture in L.A. that they kind of acknowledge but don't like to talk about, right, that mm -hmm. ruins a lot of people. In that area, because oh no, you're you're getting successful. Have a little sniff, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Boogie nights. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but exactly. Uh, but but yeah, it is tragic when someone dies that young, and and I I I sometimes get disturbed by this sort of thing because you can sort of tell the people that are in that industry, regardless of whether you partake in it or not, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you can tell the people that are in that industry because they have to versus the ones that actually enjoy that sort of thing, I suppose. And I, and again, I don't have any judgment towards the people that actually, no, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do with my life, right? Because mm -hmm. they're making a 
choice to do that, right? But the ones that have to because they think they don't have a choice in the matter, those are always the tragic cases. I mean, and we even got some that I'm, I'm aware of because they are so embedded in geek culture that even if you don't <laughs> frequent that sort of thing, right. you know about them just because they're such nerds that you know them based on their nerdy side as opposed to, I mean, like, uh, shoot, what was the name of that one? One of them quit a couple of years ago and went on her own making independent pictures and stuff <laughs> like that, like art books and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So she totally gave up that life and went to another one. She was, uh, shoot, what was her name? Sasha Gray, that's what it was. Um, but she she started trying to act in things like, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting titles of things and stuff like that. I'm, I'm catching it off of you. Um, <laughs> she, that, that one movie, that one show on, I think it was Showtime about the agent that became a movie that we couldn't believe it had become a movie. Uh, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm looking at her IMDb page right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, like she apparently played one of the guys' girlfriend or something like that. And then she started doing these artistic books where it was not nude photography, but model-esque photography. She I played suppose. on Entourage. Entourage. There we go. That's, yeah, that's it. That's she, what it was. She's played on Entourage, and she's act, she actually did the voice of Viola de Winter in Saints Row the Third video game in 2011. Mm-hmm. Or say she's got this little title called Anal Artist, too, so that's interesting. Right. (laughs) (laughs) But but yeah, she was she was mostly on my radar because she was such a nerd and she she did a lot of things for G4, right? Mm -hmm. So she would be reporting on things and stuff like that. Um they would they would send her into the conventions that no one else would cover, stuff like that. You know, so it it was that sort of thing. Um I have seen her Pirates 2, Stagnetta's Revenge. Sam's going to go, that's it? Show's over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, these, these trailers come across my feeds every now and then because these porn industries are starting to get smart. They know that they can make for these parodies of all these geek properties, and it's starting to cool down now. Either yeah. that or all of these geek blogs are just going, you know what, guys, we're not going to cover your stuff anymore. We've had enough. Yeah. I don't know whichever way it's going, but... They they got smart for a while where they were starting to make safe for work trailers mm-hmm. to where it didn't have any of the sex stuff in it. It was just the jokes. And and, and I, I saw a Pokemon I, one. That one yeah. was I, I think I was scarred after that. <laughs> yeah. But these safe for work trailers made me lean back and go, Now you see, guys, <laughs> I would watch this if it wasn't porn. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's it's it, the phrase that always comes to mind, and again, I'm not being judgmental, but it's like, what a waste. All of you are doing this pitch perfect. You could clearly act in something. <laughs> but, okay, whatever. That's that's fine. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I guess it, I guess it's the actor in me that goes, dudes, you, you could totally pull this off. What are you mm-hmm. doing here, right? But that's, that's just me. Like I said, this is, this is just tragic because it's, it's like anyone else that gets involved in show business and it swallows them alive, I suppose, is the best way to put it. So, Yeah. I, <clears throat> I guess in any industry, you can, you can get caught up like that. I mean, um, I was reading an article the other day that was talking about how <clears throat> depression runs rampant through the video game development industry. Mm, yeah. Um, Bit. I can imagine that. Can you can you imagine the crap that someone that makes a video game has to go through? Oh, I know. And see, possibly a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, and then they have that big push when they're getting close to launch. Where and there's actually a term for it that I can't remember, but it's it's like constantly working almost twenty four seven for like three or four or five, maybe even six months, working right up to launch, just trying to get the thing launched. And we're, you know. <clears throat> Back whenever I was growing up in the eighties, I mean, video games. Ugh, you, hmm. you know, the cost the cost of actually producing a video game was nothing. But now we're talking budgets that rival movies. You know, multi million dollar franchises. 
Yeah, I think Grand Theft Auto Five, the one that of course comes to mind, was like several million or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh. Well, I'm curious now. How much did Grand Theft Auto Five cost to make? I didn't want to know how much it made. Hmm. Two hundred and sixty-five million dollars. Yeah. That's its development and marketing budget together. That, that mm -hmm. that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. It is. But I mean it shows whenever you actually play the game itself, but <laughs> but it sold over a billion dollars worth of copies. Mhm, mm it certainly did. In fact, if, since I'm in the studio, I And see, I've never played the game ever. Uh, it's over there some to somewhere. There's too many green boxes. I'm not even going <laughs> to bother. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's part of the ones that just fell over and are like, hey, eh, you can't read us. So whatever. I don't care. The point is it's over there. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've never played the game. But mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it's it's tragic. I mean, in any industry and for any reason, when someone dies at, at 31, that's just, I mean, there's... You know, I I knew that at 30, I didn't have life figured out. Hell, at 46, I still don't have it figured out. But I still mm. had a, a fair amount of my life ahead of me. There was a lot that I wanted to accomplish. And, uh, and granted, I hadn't spent the last 10 years in porn. I <laughs> thought about getting in it, but then again, I knew I would starve. So <laughs> there's that. <clears throat> and I haven't even made it to 31 yet. So I've got... <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot to look forward to anyway. Apparently. <laughs> um. That's pretty much all I had on my radar. You got anything else you want to talk about? No, I'm pretty good on my radar too today. All right. Well, this will this will just be a little shorter, and that's good because I got to grab a bite to eat before we get to our four o'clock appointment this afternoon. So, um, you got anything you wanna you wanna plug? What you doing? What you got going on? Uh, just as usual, um, we're we're actually doing two episodes of Going Through Who in a row in two weeks. One of our little we missed last week, so to make up for you guys, we are actually doing the two in a row. So keep an eye out for that at tscn.tv slash gtw. But otherwise, yeah, it's it's just all of the podcasts, as usual, are at tscn.tv. And if you want to find me more personally, it's at about.me slash labtech7. So those are your places. All right. And uh, we do this show uh, daily, Monday through Thursday, at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. I say Eastern time because, well, we're in daylight saving time right now. But anyway, so at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. And we have a call-in number, 229-518-3525. And pretty much everything I'm doing is over at slant.fm or all that social media stuff that I can't seem to stand today. is <laughs> at about.me slash Kissing. So we'll be back tomorrow, 2 p.m., hopefully Thursday. It'll be the 7th of April to talk about current events, pop culture, movies, television, video games, technology, and whatever else happens to cross our radar. So until then, take care of yourselves. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. show is a production of the Slant FM Digital Network. Find more at slant.fm.